Hello there, and welcome back. We are now going to add in the final particle effect for our level. We have this really nice little campfire model here, which is currently doing nothing. So we're going to add some fire to it. So those of you who have been all excited that we're going to be adding fire, rejoice, because it's now time to get on with your uh, pyromaniac self. If we take a look here inside of our particles folder, of course, there's an entire section dedicated to fire. But we really only have two examples. We have Fire 1 and we have Flame. Fire 1 is great if you have uh, like a forest fire viewed at a distance kind of thing. I mean, it really gives the feel of great, big, slow-moving flames that look really nice from far away. Uh, if you want to light a building on fire, it'd probably be the way to go. Uh, but what we need is the flame example. So we'll just take that and drag that in right here. And you'll notice it comes with a light. And I haven't even let go of the mouse, but that's just cool to me. Just bring a little light around. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm easily entertained. So we'll drag that right over our fire and let go. And there we go. We're done. All right. Fortunately, a, a fire this big. I mean, we'd be roasting marshmallows inside the tent. Well, I don't know. I think the tent would, would be just on burst flame. into flames, <laughs> burn down, and leave us stranded here in the middle of the, the snowy wilderness. So we're going to tone this down. We're going to make some, some adjustments to the overall particle system. So without any further ado, uh, let's take uh, the flame object and expand it. Now, if you take a look here, this is a pretty involved little particle system. And this does a really good job of illustrating a point that we've already brought up twice when discussing particles. And that is that you're rarely going to be able to get the, the effect you want from a single particle system. You're going to have to start bringing a lot of different things together uh, to get an, an overall effect, get a lot of particle systems working in concert, a lot of emitters all working together to get exactly the look you're chasing. So here we have the inner core, which if we click, we get to see that kind of move by itself. And let me go ahead and move the camera a little bit, make that a little easier to see. We have the outer core, which is the dark orangish flames on the outside. And then we have the smoke, which kind of wafts up into the sky. It's really light smoke. I mean, for, for a fire that big, that's some really light smoke. But that's okay. I'm not too stressed about it. Now, we also have a light source, which is, has nothing to do with particles. It's just a point light that has been brought in to help it look like this fire is emitting some light, which is pretty handy. But even then, you figure a fire this big, that would be a whole lot more light. Yeah, I would think there'd be a whole lot more light, because even from this distance, we'd be, like, singeing our eyebrows. So, uh, let's start off with our inner core, which is the most obvious part of the flame, and let's take a look at how we can make that get a lot smaller. Now, I'm going to do the same trick we used in the previous video. I am going to uh, unlock my inspector, which was locked at the end, uh, during the last video, and it was still locked. So, I'm going to make sure that gets unlocked by clicking the little padlock that is up near the upper right corner of the Unity window. And make sure I have the inner core selected and then re-lock that so that I can just grab the flame object. And that makes it a lot easier to see what the inner core is doing without all of those extra drawing lines getting in my way. Now, we need to change the overall size of this flame. I mean, the width down at the bottom is a bit much, sure. But the big thing here is that this fire is really, really tall. Now, the reason the flame is so tall is because the particles that make it up are living for a very long time. So what we're going to do is take the overall energy and bring it down. Right now, it's set to two. Let's just try cutting in half. Let's just go one by one. And immediately, our fire is nowhere near as tall as it was a second ago. Now, we can also, let's see, if we take a look through all of our settings... Uh, let's see, we've got our world velocity, max emission. We have our size as well. You we probably bring the size down a little bit. Let's try 1.5 by 1.5 for min and max size. And that should bring a little bit more of that shape back in because we still had these great big particles that just weren't going very far. And so our fire started to look very blob-like. Now, something else we can do is come over here to our outer core for now. And you, you know, you can go back and forth as to whether or not you should do this, but we can go ahead and switch that off for the time being. Unlock your uh, inspector. Oh, yeah, that, that would help too. So unlock the inspector first, then go to the outer core and switch that off. And then go back to the inner core, relock the inspector. And this just shows us only this one aspect of it. So if you just want to get everything else out of the way, 
Uh, that's a nice way to do it. And since we've relocked the inspector, we can click on flame and uh, just kind of get all those blue lines out of the way as well. So let's see. We can maybe pull that min and max size down to one by one. And that's looking a little better. Um, I think we could probably... Well, there's a lot of different things we could do. Uh, let's see here. Let's take the point of emission. Uh, which really, to, to do that, we just need to grab our inner core object. I'm going to pull that down a little bit so that these flames are coming out a little bit closer to the, the wood source. Now, granted, the outer core is taking care of some of that but I don't want to rely so heavily on the outer core after we've changed so much of the behavior of the fire. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this down just a little bit further. And let's go back up here to the flame. And this is already looking a lot better than it was. It's still pretty heavy, though. I mean, and it's one of those things where, like with all particle systems, you're just going to go and set values and test and set values and test. But let's try, oh, max energy of 75. <laughs> That's a little much. 0.75. And also, because we're changing the energy and decreasing it, we probably don't need as many of the particles. That's true. And our, our emission is set to 30 across the board, so min and max is both set to 30. Let's try pulling that down to 20 by 20. Now, what I don't want is to have a whole lot of separation so we can see each one of those texture tiles. As a matter of fact, just for sake of example, if I set this to 1 by 1, we can see each one of the little particles, and we don't want that. So let's try 20 and 20. That's not bad for starters. Now let's see if we bring the outer core back in and start tweaking that for a while. Turn so the emitter back on. Turn the emitter back on, and now we have some particles here as well. Now, obviously, the outer core now needs some pretty serious adjustment too. Uh, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and uh, lock this in. So we're just looking at the outer core and then pick on the flame object and of course that's looking really bulbous let's give it pretty much the same treatment we'll take min and max energy and we'll pull this down to 0.75 as well now min and max size we're going to need to bring down so that's 1.2 so let's bring that down to 0.6 and I don't know in this case it almost feels like we could use maybe a little Maybe a little more, kind of thicken it up. Maybe make it a little bit larger, make them live a little bit longer. Yeah, uh, I think maybe I pushed it down a little bit too far. So let's try maybe 0 0.9 by 0 0.9, and then they can live from, say, 1 to 1 for now. And that already looks a whole lot better. Though maybe 0 0.9 might be a little much. So a little bit of back and forth here. But really, I kind of like going about it this way, where you sort of you know feel your way to the answer and show how... Working with particles is really a lot of tweaking a value and watching what it does, as opposed to just plugging in magic numbers and saying, here, now set it to 0.75, set this to 0.2, and have a nice day. You want to drop their emission a, a bit, too? A little. Not too much. Let's try 25 by 25. I mean, that's not a perfect ratio for how we uh, diminish the other one, but it's not bad either. I mean, and this isn't a perfect fire, but you can tell it is fire. Mm -hmm. It's getting the point across very nicely. Uh, it's actually matching more like the amount of light that was coming out of it, too, which is nice. And it's about the size of the campfire that we've got. I'd say bring the uh, ellipsoid in just a tad, too, on the uh, on, this on the one. outer core? Yep. Yeah. So let's see here. Let's try, ooh, let's try 0.5 down the board. Did you not? You don't want to take that? Okay, well, we'll just... Oh, it was there. It's just not drawing back. It must be some sort of setting with our uh, our video setup. And 0.5 and 0.5. So that kind of snugs that in just a little bit more. Now, our smoke has got a little bit of a gap to it. I wouldn't mind bringing the smoke down a little bit more. So I'm going to unlock my inspector. Actually, we don't need to worry about the inspector for this, but we're going to click on our smoke and we'll just pull that down just a little bit further, which is technically down into the ground, but that's okay. Now what's it using for a shader? That's a good question. So if we select our smoke, we have unlocked the inspector, so we can come down here, and here's particles just using regular additive. Yeah, let's change Switch it that to back over to sorted. Uh, well, it's because we changed the steam. Oh, actually, that's true. We'll we have to duplicate it. Yeah, we'll have to duplicate it. So let's take a look at doing that. 
Now, if we come in here to our particles and we take a look under the sources folder, we'll see all of our various materials and shaders. So if we expand this, here's smoke, which looks like that's the one we're using. Mm -hmm. So let's grab smoke and we'll hit control D. And that gives us smoke one. Uh, so let's actually take smoke one. And here's how I'm going to do this. We're going to call this steam. Okay. So that kind of gets that out of the way. Now, I'm going to walk away from my fire for just a minute. So if you watched us build the steam in the last video, this is uh, this will be no big deal. But this is uh, just kind of the way we're going to transition between the two here. So I'm going to fly back over to our hot spring, which should be hiding right over here. Now, all of these guys, if we take a look at them, they're currently using the smoke shader. So what I'd like to do is get these to start listening to the uh, the steam one that we just put together. Let's just grab steam. Oh, make sure we have fluffy smoke selected. And you'll have to open up the particle render tab. Oh, I thought it was already open. I wasn't even looking. I hate it when I do that. So let's scroll down, make sure particle render is open. And underneath materials, we'll see our element zero, which is currently listening to smoke. And we're just going to drag the steam right on top of that, like so. And now nothing has changed because, again, we just duplicated that material. But now we can take our original material, which was supposed to be for smoke, and we can make it look like smoke once again. Now, again, the, gr the way we did the steam originally was a little bit backwards because of this. But because we were just kind of playing around getting used to the settings, it's actually okay. So, again, all we did was go underneath Particle Render, expand that. Inside of Materials, we took Element 0, which is the only material currently applied to those particles, and we applied our newly duplicated and renamed Steam Material. Now, let's come back over to our Smoke, and we're going to change this around. So, currently this has been set to Additive, and that's no good. So, let's switch this back over to Depth Sorted. So, we'll go to Particles. And I'm sorry, it was alpha blended, I believe. I, I'm thinking depth sorted because I'm still living in a Maya world. So now let's switch over to flame. And now we have much nicer looking smoke even just by doing that. Mm. Now let's see, is there anything else we really want to change about this? Do you see anything you want to tweak? Because I'm, I'm already really. pretty happy with it. Yeah, it's good enough for an introductory fire. Yeah, so I mean, we've got our little campfire. I think now we just need to test it. So we've got some fire. It's casting some smoke. It actually looks kind of nice. We just want to sit here on the bench and, you know. Yeah, we don't have any s'mores. toxic smoke coming off of it. No, no, it, it actually looks pretty nice. And then uh, if we still come over here to our little steam bath, our hot spring, we have all of the steam that we set up earlier just by uh, tweaking that original material. So that is not only everything I wanted to show in this video, but it's all of the particle effects that I wanted to bring into this level. So this kind of wraps up our very quick uh, kind of hi, how you doing uh, introduction to particles to get you acquainted with how they work and some of the ways in which you can edit them. The big thing I wanted to get across here is that you don't have to start everything from scratch if you don't want to. You got a lot of fantastic examples which already come with Unity that you can bring in and tweak to your heart's content to get whatever look you might be chasing out of. So that is going to wrap everything up for this video. Thanks a lot.